Welcome to ASHRAE's overview and introduction to building decarbonization series. This series of presentations will update you on the progress of building decarbonization and discuss possibilities for near zero emissions. The term carbon is short for greenhouse gas emissions using carbon dioxide equivalent as the metric. Decarbonization is the process of removing or reducing human-made greenhouse gas emissions. The world is coming together to reduce the amount of carbon we emit into the atmosphere and all industries and sectors will need to contribute. The building sector is no exception. In fact, our industry is one of the most significant contributors to human-made carbon emissions. I am Kent Peterson. I currently chair the ASHRAE Task Force for Building Decarbonization, and I will be narrating this series. This presentation is presented in four modules. This module will cover decarbonization overview and terminology. Future modules will cover understanding global and embodied carbon issues, ASHRAE's involvement in building decarbonization, and finally, a pathway to building decarbonization. Today, more and more people around the world are seeking to improve their quality of life, as our world population has more than quadrupled over the past 100 years. Between now and the year 2050, the world population is expected to increase by 1.9 billion people. By 2050, 7 billion people are projected to live in urban areas. To meet these needs, the global building stock is expected to double by 2060. This is the equivalent of adding an entire New York City to the planet every 34 days for the next 40 years. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, we need to cut human-related greenhouse gas emissions to near zero by 2050 if we were to avoid the worst consequences of climate change. If we don't, the natural systems that keep Earth's climate relatively peaceful and comfortable will start to tip. The shift will be chaotic, and the new normal might not be as conducive to life as we know it. Fossil fuels helped create our unprecedented rate of technological advancement and population growth over the last two centuries. We will need to learn how to supply affordable energy in the future without the carbon emissions from fossil fuels. In response to IPCC's call for action, many countries, public and corporate entities have set goals to be carbon neutral by 2050. This figure from late 2021 shows commitments from over 130 countries. Businesses continue to announce commitments to reducing carbon through their portfolios and internal operation and investors are adding further pressure to take action. The United States federal government has pledged a net zero emissions federal building portfolio by 2045. If the last decade was a time for commitments, this decade is a time for action. We are now seeing governments, public and private entities acting or wanting to act on these commitments, and they are all looking at their building portfolios. Building decarbonization is the process of removing or reducing human-made greenhouse gas emissions related to buildings. Think of it more as a journey over the next three decades to get the global building sector to near net zero emissions by 2050. Whole life carbon emissions of a building are bucketed into operational or embodied carbon emissions. Operational carbon is the amount of carbon emitted during the operation of the building. This includes both energy and water related emissions during the use of the building. Embodied carbon is the amount of carbon emitted from the extraction of the raw materials for the building to the building's end of life. It's essentially everything in the life of the building that's not covered by operational carbon, including refrigerant emissions. It is important to understand carbon terminology. Carbon dioxide equivalent is simply a means to put various greenhouse gases on a warming effect scale relative to carbon dioxide. Global warming potential was developed to allow comparisons of the global warming impacts of different greenhouse gases. Specifically, it measures how much energy the emissions of one ton of gas will absorb over a given time, relative to the emissions of one ton of CO2. The time period typically used is 100 years. As you can see from the refrigerants on the right, the GWP varies significantly amongst the refrigerants we have used in our industry. There are also many references to direct and indirect emissions. Relative to buildings, direct emissions are from sources owned or controlled by the building owner. 
including items like emissions from burning fossil fuels, while indirect emissions are emitted at sources owned by some other entity, primarily from electricity supplied by the electric grid. Life cycle assessment is a methodology used to total up the environmental impact associated with all the stages of a building's life. This is an effective tool for evaluating alternates and understanding trade-offs with the embodied carbon of certain material decisions and operational carbon reduction strategies. The European standard EN 15978 covers this in detail. Environmental product declaration, or EPDs, provide the life cycle environmental impact of materials and products and enables designers and owners to compare products fulfilling the same function. This is a good source for determining embodied carbon emissions from products that are being considered for a building project. The last term worth noting is building performance standards. We are familiar with building energy codes that govern energy efficiency of proposed new or retrofitted buildings. Building performance standards address existing buildings. Several jurisdictions have turned their attention to building performance standard policies that require building owners to meet performance targets by actively improving their buildings over time. Some of these are already enacted. The State of Washington Clean Building Act that was signed into law in 2019 requires building owners to ratchet down building energy use intensities in the future. Another example is New York City's Local Law 97. Most buildings over 25,000 square feet will be required to meet new energy efficiency and greenhouse gas emission limits by 2024, with stricter limits coming into effect in 2030. This concludes the first module. Please join us for the second module to further this discussion regarding the building industry, global and embodied carbon issues as we further explore pathways to net zero emissions by 2050.